next lecture is going to be given by Saurabh Kundu, who is uh, at Tata Steel. He was formerly at the Indian Institute of Technology in Karagpur and also in Cambridge University, and he's going to talk about variant selection during transformations. Thank you. Good morning to you all. Uh, today, my topic is uh, the Dallard metric and microstructural response of variant selection during uh, Bainite or Martensite transformations. The authors uh, with me are uh, Ankita uh, Pinaki. They are two are from Tata Steel. Uh, Shibrat Singh is sitting over there. He's from IIT Kharagpur. Myself, Saurav, is also from Tata Steel. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge Vijayalakshmi, who's from Tata Steel and done most of the global tests. Itishri done a very good program for me. Swamik had helped me with the preparation in the in the uh, uh, of the presentations. And I would like to thank uh, the APMS organizers for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk in front of you. So we did two kind of experiments. One, we have transformed or induced martensitic transformation in, in a super benetic steel at 300 degrees Celsius with or without load. When we induced the benetic transformation with load, we have used both compression and uh, tensile load. The other one in which uh, uh, where we have induced magnetic transformation after we have plastically deformed the austenite at 400 degrees Celsius, unloaded the specimen, and then the transformation occurred at 300 degrees Celsius. So these are the two uh, kinds of magnetic transformation. We had stress induced, no stress, and strain induced. So in, in all variant selection uh, work, it is important to identify the variance precisely. And this is how we did it. First, it is important to know the ideal orientation of, of uh, the Benetic variants, 24. Uh, there are 24 variants within one gamma grain. How do we do it? This is uh, actually, we make use of these three things. Dilatation, orientation of gamma grain, that is that we get from the EBSD experiment. We calculate the ideal orientation relationship using uh, the phenomenological theory of Martensite crystallography. Multiply these two, and we get, uh, Using this equation, you can see the 24 ideal, uh, ideal orientation of Bennett variants. Now, this is important to identify each and every point that you get from the EBSD analysis to see which, which variant this comes from. So let us say that this is one, one particular uh, point in the EBSD map, having this orientation given uh, in, in the, in this, uh, with respect to these three Euler angles. We then uh, try to calculate the misorientation angle between this point and these 24 variants. Indeed, we get 24 uh, angles over there, and there is a minima. Now, that minima tells us that which variant this point belong to. After we do that, for all the points that we gathered in the EBSD, we actually do a proper calc we actually get a, uh, get a um, quantitative feel of the volume fraction of different variants. Now, why uh, stress will, will affect the variant selection? It is because of the interaction energy, and the interaction energy originates from the, strength, uh, from the, from the strain uh, associated with each variant that interacts with the, with the stress that is externally applied. And of course, they are different because all the variants are differently oriented. So these, these different variants are, have different interaction energy associated with them. And that interaction energy is added to the chemical free energy available for their transformation. So more the interaction energy, there should be more and more variant selection. Although we need to see how, whether it is correct all the time or not. This is, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are giving example for two, two, from two different austenite grains. We'll give another example. Now this red line actually talks about the interaction energy of different variants and this black columns are showing their volume fraction. This is the pole figure. You can see that only there is a general, and I must say only there is a general trend that higher the variants, variants with higher interaction energy will have higher chances of formation. That is also there. So the population of variants are more over here, less over here. But this is not really applied variant to variant. So why is that? That we need to understand. Now we are not really worried about the fact that these variants all are having similar energy, but all of them are not present 
in similar volume fraction or the same volume fraction that might happen uh, that might happen because of the physical constraint or the, the, the positional advantages some benign, some variant will get due to the nucleation posi the, the position of their nuclei. But we are worried about the fact that there are certain variants over here or over here like over here that they are very low in interaction energy, but still there is considerable they are, they are present in considerable amount. Another point that we must note here from these uh, pole figures that all the areas of the pole figure where there should be some intensity it is present. So, none of these areas is actually none of these uh, areas is actually uh, having uh, a very high intensity these are all more or less similar. So, another point that we came we, 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 we get from here is the variance selection may not be very strong in this case. Now, a better explanation of variance selection under stress can be given through this technique. So, this is again another example from another grain. We have classified the variance into three groups. These three groups are three Bain zones. So, after we classified them into three Bain zones, we get the cumulative volume fraction of those Bain zones of those variants and we also get the cumulative interaction energy. If we do that, then you get a much better feel and we see that where the, the, the area where the, the Bain zones having the maximum interaction energy have the maximum chances of uh, having the high, higher volume fraction and so on. Now, there is another point within these Bain zones how the variants are distributed. It is shown over here. If you see now, if we actually see the variance within one particular different Bain zones, then probably we can say that the higher, higher interaction energy will give higher volume fraction. Although there are certain areas like here or here where it does not happen and it can be explained through a more minute explanation through the uh, 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 by seeing the microstructure which we have already given in this paper. I will not explain to I will not go into that, but I will try to explain why it is logical to distribute the variance into three Bain zones. Now, what are three Bain zones? These red, uh, black and green areas are the three Bain variants. Now, Bain variance does not actually there in, in practice, but there are variants which form around these, these perfectly oriented Bain variants. We call those variants to be there in within one Bain zone and the similarity is of those variants lies in their in the mis misorientation that they have in between them. The misorientation between these variants over here are very low, whether the misorientation between any variant over here and over here are quite high. So, actually the variance within one Bain zone as they have less misorientation between them, they probably actually help in the cooperative growth and that is why they behave as a group and that is why we know we get a good match of interaction energy and the volume fraction when you group them into different groups, different Bain zones. What we have seen so far under the variance selection under stress is this, the variance selection under stress austenite is not strong. Variance selection under stress depends weakly on interaction energy of each variant, but you get a better prediction of variance selection when you consider the cumulative interaction energy of all variants within a Bain zone. It has been observed that the volume fraction of variance in at least two of the three Bain zones are quite high. Maybe the third one is less, but at least in two Bain zones the, the volume fraction is quite high. Now, the variants within one Bain zone have less misorientation and probably that is actually causes uh, less of herd impingement or they actually they actually promote the growth uh, of each other and that is why it is it is giving a better better uh, alignment within uh, within this area. Now, uh, variant selection have two two different uh, it, it impacts uh, the steel in two different ways. One it actually changes the microstructure or the alignment of sheaves are influenced by variant selection. So, this is where the Benai transformation has occurred under tensile stress. We have around 34 percent austenite remaining in this microstructure and Benai 66 percent and you can see that there is a very weak maxima at around this angles which is about 60 degree, but it is not very strong that is the, the, the distribution is not very strong. We do not see a very sharp peak everywhere. Now, we wanted to understand whether this is just an experimental error or it is actually that is something what is happening. In order to understand that, 
we uh, modeled it in this way. We take all the, say this is one bainite plate, and the stress, uh, the trace of the habit plane on the surface is this. We calculated the angle between the trace of the habit plane and the direction of applied stress. When we did that, we get uh, get this for all all the Martin all the bainite that is forming. Now we want to understand that if all 24 variants are forming within a grain or there are less number of variants are forming. That means whether there is a variant selection. Again, if there is a variant selection, we can assume that there are two variants forming among uh, within the 24 possible ones or more. What we have done is we have predicted it. Sorry. Assuming that there are two variants forming. In that case, we should have got a very sharp peak at 45 degree angle, but that does not happen. So, then we thought that there should be 8 variants, 8 variants forming. If we, if we assume that, then you can see that yes, there is indeed a weak maxima over here at 60 degree angle. Now, then we try to think that whether it actually happens or not. What we have done is we have, we have seen in many of these grains, we have shown the example for 6, six different grains. How the, the first 8 energetically favored variants are placed. If we consider that the first 8 energetic, energetically favored variants are forming, then you can see in most of the grains that covers the 70 percent of the total bainite present. So, we thought that that might be one, one good idea to assume 8 or 9 variants are forming in this particular case although and then we can get this, we can explain the experimental result that you have just seen. Now, here Bainite sheaves uh, are, are under plastic strain. That is, when bainite forms under plastic strain, then the scenario is like this. There is a very sharp maxima at 45 degree angle, and this you can see from the microstructure over here. We wanted to see that what this is, where this is coming from. When we actually predicted the distribution of most active strip planes in this microstructure, we have also got another maxima at 45 degree angle. So, probably the bainite uh, which forms from the deformed austenite, the variant selection in that case depends a lot on the slip activities and we will see, we have modeled that also, we will see in the subsequent slides. The other way apart from microstructure, variant selection influences uh, uh, the, the properties of steel is, is in the transformation strain. Now, this transformation strain, I am sorry it is not coming properly, anyway, now this transformation strain can be predicted uh, in this manner, this we have already uh, published. Say there is a austenite grain like this, there is a vector u. If a, if a bainite forms like this, then it will influence the this delta u length. So, that particular vector now becomes v and that v can be explained with this, with this formula. This p is the shape deformation matrix associated with each variant and this is what is remaining. Now, this particular formula, if we extend it to 24 variants and a multi-phase steel, then it becomes, I am sorry, this is not coming properly, then it becomes, uh, then we can predict the, the transformation strain in a multi-phase steel. And you can actually say how many variants are forming and, and then accordingly, we can predict the transformation strain. What we assume over here is, the strain associated with each bainite plate interacts with each other the shear strain gets cancelled, but the volume strain remains. And probably, if we get a stronger variant selection, then we will also get a higher transformation strain. But we need to check that, and we will see in the subsequent slides that that does not always happen. So, this is an example, this is from the global experiment. This is the transformation strain that occurs when bainite transforms with, with, without any load. And this transformation strain you can see is very low. This, if we compare, with the volume deformation and the shear deformation associated with each bainite plate, we can see that this number and this number are actually very close. Why I am saying this is close is this. This is what we have done, uh, you know, in experiment, the experimental strain is measured only in the transverse direction. Of course, this is volume, so you can actually multiply with 3. And then in this particular, in this particular steel, about 60 percent bainite is there. So, this, this particular uh, transformation strain that we get from the, from the experiment is close to what we actually uh, get uh, from the uh, phenomenological theory of Martensite crystallography. However, the strain increases considerably 
when we transform the transfer the transform the benite under compressive load it it becomes 0 1 4 that means the variance selection in this case actually influencing the transformation strain and increases to a great extent the same thing the same thing occurs of course in case of uh, in case of um, uh, transformation when it occurs under tensile stress the important thing to observe here is that transformation strain in this case is negative that means in case of compressive stress we get a transformation strain which is positive or expansion type in case of transformations in case of trans transformation occurring under tensile it is becoming negative or contraction type now interesting fact we can check here when transformation occurs from strained austenite you can see here the variant selection is quite strong only 3 or 4 variants are forming and you can see from pole figure that it is very strong over here but the transformation strain in this case when we measured we saw that it is very low it is 007 you can compare this with the with the transformation strain that has that we have seen in case of in case of compressive stress and tensile stress where the numbers were like 015 and 02 here it becomes 007 so the points over here are there are there is very strong variant selection from strained austenite maximum 3 or 4 variants form in each grain all favored variants are present in one bend zone and transformation strain is extremely low we have modeled it uh, of course i am not going to go in detail of that the fe model is used to see that what are the slip activities in different uh, slip planes and we have actually put some some rules to select the, to, to for the selection of the of the variants that is if this is the plane i'm sorry if this is the plane which is having maximum slip activity and these are the 24 variants we first see which are the 24 uh, which are the which are the habit planes that is closely spaced uh, spaced with this particular slip plane then we get maybe this eight eight part eight variants and then with all these variants are having a displacement direction we try to find the angle of this displacement direction with the with the slip direction over here and then that gives us refine the search even further and we get these four variants now in these four variants are now associated with one or the other slip uh, one or the other uh, 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 you know uh, slip uh, system and accordingly we can rank them we got a very good match you can see over here so i'll not go in detail uh, in detailed discussion of this but i want to show show one particular thing over here that we can see there is a selective selection what is that if we are predicting four variants to be to be more most probable ones we get only two why is that what you have done is we try to first find out the angle between habit plane normals of these four predicted variants there is no correlation however when we do the same and see the misorientation between them we actually see that the misorientation between variant number 20 and 4 are the minimum and indeed these two variants are the variants which are forming the same thing we have observed in another gain over here and here are my conclusions thank you thank you we are open for questions. We know about uh, variant selection in martensitic transformation. So fundamentally, this is my uh, curiosity that fundamentally uh, variant selection in martensitic transformation and benetic transformation are the same or they show some distinct difference? So martensite and uh, benite uh, crystallographically they are same. Of course, there is a lot of debate and uh, wh what you can say is crystallographically they are same. So the variant selection rule that applies for uh, martensite applies as well for benite. Uh, thanks for a very interesting uh, lecture. Um, I would like to know if um, you, you take into a, well, in fact, I have uh, two parts of my question. Yeah. So first, if you speak about the interaction energy, yeah. which you consider as the, the, the main um, mechanism of variant selection, do you take into account only elastic interaction or elastic and plastic interaction? Okay, so so I'll just go back. Okay, so 
we are we are actually considering you know um, if you see the okay so this is how we calculate it now this is the, if 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 this is the traction that we actually see from the externally applied stress this interacts with the strain field that with which is associated with this particular uh, variant and then uh, then uh, i'm sorry this is not very visible so so uh, so we actually consider uh, both elastic plastic uh, uh, interaction yes. okay but this is in the case when you have an an applied external stress like under a tensile condition yeah but of course also in if you do not apply uh, a stress yeah. the transforming grain will be embedded in a in a in a parent matrix so this also will ap have will apply a local stress did you take this in into account yeah so you know we have one publication in fact where we try to predict variant selection from the strained uh, austenite <laughs> now what we have seen there if we can predict or you can calculate the residual stress that is remaining in that particular steel then that also gives us good variant selection uh, uh, prediction so uh, and also there are quite a few publications where uh, people have people try to predict the variant selection from the stress or the strain that from the stress that is generated due to the formation of the first uh, plate let us say because that will deform the austenite also now that also can impact the variant selection so yes this those that part is ignored over here what you have done in this case we are only considering a stress which is below the below the plastic uh, uh, limit or below the yield strength of the material and then we try to see that how that particular stress is interacting with the strain that is associated with bainite or martensite plate and then we get the energy interaction energy but the other one which we which i described at a later stage uh, there we are trying to see how the plastic strain is in is there in particular slip systems and how those slip systems are associated with different variants with respect to the to the habit plane and displacement direction and i think that part is new because i, I have not seen of course there is uh, there is paper by professor jonas who talks about uh, you know the the uh, the partial dislocations now this one or in the other way these are the same because we are talking about the he is talking about partial dislocations of course those are related to the slip activities and they are all here also we are talking about the slip activities and how these are uh, you know associated or related with different variants okay thank you uh, we, we have a i uh, it was the same as leos okay thanks everyone does the variant selection depend on strain rate and i i just wanted to have a comment uh, uh, thank you for an excellent presentation thank you frankly i do not know uh, okay so pedro i think uh, yes, you can comment there is literature that shows that strain rate from the oh sorry there's literature from the 70s which not necessarily that shows that um, the 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 uh, strain induced margin side transformation is highly dependent upon strain Right, I think by Maurice Koch and uh, whoever has it. Both, mm. yeah, yeah. Now, uh, one thing uh, that I uh, definitely know that uh, the strain rate will impact the kinetics of the formation, etc. But whether that will impact the variance selection or not, I really do not know. So we need to see. Um, when you calculated the volume fractions of your variance and yeah. compared them, did you take into account stereological effects? Sorry? So, did you take into account any stereological effects? So, for example, I mean, if you have some, uh, if you have a plate-shaped thing, if you have something that's with its habit plane lying in the plane of the surface, it's going to occupy more of a volume than if you've got something. No, where you're essentially no, we, we do not. We do not. You. But you see, uh, the EBSD when we do maybe on a surface, it's 2D EBSD only. Then that will give a uh, uh, three Euler angles, which describes its orientation. Now we want to see that how that that from that and the ideal orientation that we already know we are just calculating the misorientation angle between them the one which is giving the minimum misorientation angle we assign that particular point to that variant so this is how it is done and i think that will not change that will not change if you consider a 3d situation or a 2d situation because because those should be the same I, oh, can i um i think what i'm what i'm saying is that if you're you're comparing the the, the amount of 
how much of each particular variant is there in your sample, yeah. then how much of it is there might be, if, it, if, it's, if it's a spheroidal object, then, then you're taking some cut through the middle of Kay. a sphere. Kay. Whereas if you've got a non-spheroidal object, then the plane <coughs> in which you're cutting it is actually going to give some effect on how much of it you're actually going to see, depending on the orientation of yeah. the prior so arsenide to have it placed. So that is definitely ignored, yes. That is, that is not there. Okay. Yeah, just a quick one. Thank you. It's an excellent presentation. I just wondered whether you thought there were that intergranular stresses uh, could have an effect on variant selection. You, uh, I, I assume you're saying that macroscopic stress doesn't have a significant effect. But what about stresses that arise between grains? No, I'm sure. I'm sure. When actually, I quickly showed you this. When we modeled the the strand, uh, the binary transformation from strand austenite, we have ignored the interaction between the grains. Now, that is definitely uh, going to have some effect, but what effect is, is not known to me as yet. But yes, that might have some effect. Okay, thank you very much indeed, sir, for an excellent thank you. presentation.